Well, hello Internet and welcome to part four of my XML video tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to create a document type definition or a DTD file. And I'm in Eclipse. All right, so we're going to go into Project Explorer, go to Source Folder, just like we have before, and we're going to go New. Scroll down to Other, click on that. And just like have happened before, this little wizard pops up here. We want to click on DTD file, click on next, and then we are going to name this file TV show one dot DTD, which it is right there. And we're going to click on next. And everything here is perfectly right. So we're going to go down and click on finish. All right, this is going to open up our DTD file for us to start creating some stuff here. And I just want to let you know, I'm going to do this a little bit later on, but in your XML file, if you want to link to this file that's right here on the screen, you would just enter this right here, doc type TV show, which is the name of the root element for our XML file, and then TV show one dot DTD. So that's how you would link to this in your XML file, but more on that later. As you can see here, I have the basic layout of my XML file. I'm going to change a couple things as I go through here. And I'm going to show you how to basically create the model for what you have here on the right side of your screen. Now, if you would want to input this directly inside of an XML file, you could do that. And you would just go like this and type in doc type TV show, which is the root for it. And then everything that precedes this line here, what I'm going to be typing is going to go right here inside of this box. And that's one way you could put this directly in an XML file. But I'm not going to be doing that right now either because I like linking out to a DTD file file instead. Now, I don't think I even mentioned it, but a DTD file defines the makeup of an XML file. So it's going to define or model out exactly what you want your XML file to look like, which is what's on the right side of our screen. And you specifically use a DTD to make sure that your data is valid and also so that multiple people can go and work together in a nice standard way. The first thing we're going to do here is we're going to go element. And this is pretty much what you're doing. You're going to define all the elements that are going to be in your XML file in this guy. So I'm going to type in my root element, which is going to be TV show, as you see on the right side of the screen. And then I'm going to define that I want to guarantee that I have at least one show. And I do that with the plus sign. However, I want to allow for any number of different shows to be used in this XML file. And there you go. So that's exactly what I'm just doing right there. And then I'm just going to continue to come in here and define exactly what I see on the right side of the screen by typing in element. Everything's an element, like we've been saying. And then I'm going to define the rules for show. Now I'm going to say that it must have a name and elements that don't have a quantifier. When I say quantifier, that's what the plus sign is right here. Elements that do not have a quantifier must appear only one time. And then I'm going to come in here and just create a couple more. So we have release date. Every TV show is going to have a release date. Network. Well, it is totally possible for there to be one, more than one network. So I'm going to put a plus sign inside of there once again. And then I'm going to put in a description. And again, if I don't put a quantifier, that means it's going to occur one time. Then I'm going to say actors. And then I'm going to say poster. So let's say I don't have the rights to show a different poster or show a specific poster on the screen because it's copywritten, which is 100% possible. If I do not want to guarantee or make the user enter a poster or a H reference or a link to a very specific image on the internet, I'm just going to put in a question mark. And also, let's say I don't have access to information in regards to viewers of this television show. I'm also going to put a question mark inside for that. And that just simply makes it optional. And then also, let's say that I want want either one or another of these to be entered, which would be the end date. Now I'm going off a little bit from what's on the XML file here on the right side of the screen, but that's perfectly okay. So let's say that we want to have an end date if there was an end date or if there wasn't, and I just put that or sign in there, we want them to put in the date for the next episode. And that is exactly how you would do that. So just to reiterate, if there is an end date, we want them to enter it. However, if there is no end date and there's going to be a new episode, meaning the show hasn't been canceled, we're going to put next episode inside of there. So they're going to be able to either enter in information for this or for this right here. And then we're just going to continue putting new ones in here. Next thing up, I'm going to define exactly what is inside of the element name. And you just keep typing in element in here over and over again. And I'm going to say that I want it to contain PC data. Now PC data is what is called parsed character data and it's used to denote the element contains text. And if you mark something down as PC data, that means that it can only contain text. That means it can't contain child elements. These are child elements, what you have up here. However, you could go in here and put or and have like different child elements inside of here and then put a star afterwards and that would allow you to basically have an 
anything you'd want. So let's just say name and Nick name. By putting this star here, that's going to allow people to have either PC data or have a child element named nickname, but you really don't want to do that. So I'm not going to really elaborate on that. And by PC data, what we're referring to is if you enter an entity, which I've talked about in previous tutorials, and if you haven't seen them, you've probably left already, but either way, you should definitely check that out. Like for example, whenever we had less than previously versus this, parse data means that if you use this inside of the name field, it's going to turn into the lesser than sign. And as you're going to see here in a little bit, there's something called C data. That is non-parsed text. And you could use C data inside here if that's what you'd like. And just what would happen in that situation is if you typed in this less than sign like that, it's going to show up exactly as you have on the screen. It's not going to parse into the less than sign you see there. And it's also very important, of course, since this is parsed, that you do not want to use these different symbols that I've shown you in the past. Otherwise, they could cause errors. Just stay away from those guys. And just in case you'd like to know, let's say that we wanted to make this 100% diverse, meaning that the user could basically do anything they'd want with it, which like I said previously, you don't want to do. You would just enter this in here like this. This would not hold them to enter the information in any very specific ways. It really wouldn't hold them to any rules at all. And I'm just putting or signs inside of here. And I think you get the point. Let's just cut this off to the end like that, or this like this, and then you could throw a star in there like that and that's going to allow you to go in there and basically put any type of element that you'd like in any order at all and of course I think you see why that would be a major downside and something you should avoid and another thing that's kind of a no-no but definitely something that you can do is you can come in here and define an element and instead of putting PC data and or blocks and stars and things like that all over the place you can just simply come in here and type in name and then follow that up with any and that's going to allow it also to enter any type of data or child element inside of that element. Again, I'm telling you some things that you shouldn't really necessarily do, but it's also very important to understand how they work. And now that I've created this guy, let's also say that you'd like to have a unique ID for each name of a television show. Well, I'm going to show you how to create an attribute. And if you don't remember previously, an attribute is like with network here where we have country or with poster where we have href or width or height or whatever. If you're going to define one of those guys, you just want to come in here and type attribute list. And then you have to define which element it's going to be tied to being name. And then let's say that I want to put a unique ID code in here for each show name. This is a data type called ID and that's exactly what it does. An ID is unique and it can't be used anywhere else inside of the document except for one situation which I'm going to explain to you here in a second. And then if we want to make sure that this is a required field meaning the user has to put something inside of there we just put required in there right at the end. So there you go that's how you create an element that's going to contain data. And it's also how you create an attribute for said item. I can just copy this now and use it here a couple different times because I'm going to be doing pretty much the same sort of stuff. All right, so we're going to type in release and I'm going to leave that BPC data, which is perfectly fine. Paste in another one. In this situation, we're going to have network go inside of there. And then we also have an attribute that we're going to want to assign for that, as you can see on the right side of the screen. And it's going to be for network instead of name. And it's going to be called country, right, like we have there. And in this situation, the data type that I want to use is going to be C data, which is going to be non parsed. I'm pretty much just using it just because I want to. And then I'm going to also leave that as required. And then we're going to come in here and we're also going to need to create the same thing for description. And then we're going to get to the part where we're going to define actors which is going to have child elements inside of it. So we're going to go actors, and because we want a non-limited number of actors, or zero, we're going to put a star inside of there, because that's exactly what that does for us. And then we just need to define those child elements, which is going to be actor, right, like this. And then inside of this, for actor, I'm going to type in real, underscore name, comma, and character. Also, just like you see on the right side of the screen. And then I'm going to have to come in here and define for these two elements that we just created right here, which is real name and character. And I'm just going to call this real name like that. Leave that be PC data and character like that. Also going to be PC data. And then we're going to put in here attributes for this. Just drop that in there. And we're going to say that the character element has an attribute called profession and we're going to leave it set for C data. However, we're going to say implied. And what implied simply means is that it might not contain a value. So let's say you don't know the profession of a specific character in a show, then you just wouldn't put anything in there. And we want to give the user the option to do that. And now I'm going to cover the poster and it's just going to be P-O-S-T-E-R. 
However, the way I have this set up, and I did this on purpose, it would actually be better for him to put the data in hreference, which is going to be the link to the image inside of the poster element. But I just wanted an excuse to be able to use empty inside here, which basically means that this element will never contain any value between its opening tag and its ending tag. And I'm going to get into well formedness later on in this tutorial series. And a good example of what would be a great empty field would mean the break statement. So this is a statement or a tag that never will have a value. However, it does definitely have capabilities. And that would be how you would define the break statement inside of a document type definition. But either way, we're just going to leave that the way that it is so I can continue explaining this. Then we have to put in our different attributes that we have for this guy. So this is going to be for poster. And then this is going to be H reference. I'm going to leave this as C data. And I'm I'm going to leave this as implied. Remember again, we don't want to guarantee or force the person to enter a value in this situation. Hence, we're also going to do the same thing for width and for height. Now it gets to the part where I was talking about the unique ID. Let's say inside of poster we would like to link to the show ID that we defined way up here, right on line six. And all this code is available underneath the video. Let's say that I would want to reference that from inside of poster, just for the heck of it. How would I do it? Well, I'm going to come in here and I'm going to create a new attribute and it's still going to be inside a poster. However, I'm going to call this guy show ID, and then I'm going to change this data type. If we would want to store an ID inside of there, a unique ID, that is exactly what we would do. And in this situation, I'm going to leave that as implied because once again, we don't know if there is going to be a poster. And you could actually hold multiple different ID numbers in here just by using a different data type. And in that situation, if you'd want to do that, I'm not going to do that. But let's say that you did. This is just going to change from ID ref to ID refs. And this is going to give it the capability to hold multiple different data types. And just if you'd like to see what it would look like XML wise, someone would go in and type in poster, show IDs, which is what this is, should be called. And then if they wanted to assign values to those show IDs, they would just type in show and I don't know, 100 maybe. And then show underscore 101. And then close off that tag. And that's exactly how they would do that. Again, it's set up like this because poster is empty. doesn't have a closing bracket on it. So then I'm just going to continue adding elements to this. So we got element. And another element that we have here is viewers. And this is going to be PC data, just like that. And then we have attributes. Let's just get rid of that for now. Paste that inside of there. And then we're going to assign this attribute to viewers. And we're going to call it units. And then we're going to put in C data. And then if you would want to define a default value for this, you would just inside of quotes go million, which more than likely a television show is going to have at least a million viewers. And if you would want this always to be a fixed amount, which means that nobody's going to ever be able to change it, you would just type in fixed inside of there like that. And if you would like to give the person an enumerated list, for example, which means that they'd only be able to pick from either, say, thousand or million, that's exactly how you would do that. And then you could throw something like implied in there. And then to end off this guy, it's real simple. We're just going to go in here and type in element, end, date. And then in this situation, we're going to put PC data. And I'm going to do the same thing again for next episode. And now that we have this saved, we can use this to create an XML file. So let's go over here to Java code, source again. And we're going to go file new in this situation. Go down other. Now, whenever the wizard pops up, we're going to click on XML file. Go next. Call this TV show one, XML, click next. And in this situation, we're gonna say create XML file from a DTD file, click next. And then we just have to go and find our DTD file that we created. So I'm gonna go into source and you can see it's the second one on the list, click next, and then click finish. And there you can see it went and automatically set up our XML file for us, which is very convenient. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.